Sabian Bumblebee, before that, Mr. E's Beautiful Blues by the Eels. This is Josh Whittacombe, Sunday morning on XFM. Good morning, and good no- morning, not just to the listeners, but to producer Neil. Good morning, listeners. Good morning, Josh. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you very much. Before we get started, we need to deal with what happened to us uh, <laughs> after the last show, which was last Sunday. We thought we'll go for a relaxed pint to plan the following week's show ahead of time, because we're professional. And... um we went into a pub off Leicester Square, maybe, but that was the mistake, number one. <laughs> so, we got talking to a barman. You say we got talking to... Yeah, he, he started talking to us. We, we were talked at. We were talked at by a barman. Um, uh, I asked him... I don't think I did ask him if he enjoyed his job, but I asked him something, and he misinterpreted it as that question. <laughs> at which point he said, yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I love it, um, I... I get to meet uh, interesting people, I get to chat to beautiful women, and I get to have a punch-up. <laughs> <laughs> that was my highlight. But then uh, there was a t- strange bit where he's describing how short a woman he fancied was. And I love the fact he hadn't given her his mobile number. He no. Ga- he, he gave g- her his email address. So he was obsessed with her height. Yeah. Beautiful, really short. Really short. Re- really loved how short she was. What we're going to do, we'll, we'll, we'll go there, but we'll try and go there more Sundays. <laughs> and maybe, you know, off that, we'll see if he finds out that we're obsessed with Josh Um, You're complaining earlier, we're not going to talk about it, but we are allowed to say that Neil is annoyed he doesn't get a vote in Scottish independence. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the final proof in the pudding that you're not Scottish. No, that's not the reason. No? No. I think that's what the vote is. That's what it's yes or no. Is <laughs> that Scotland split on it? <laughs> oh, right, going to move on. Yeah. Um, How's your week been? It's been good this week. I, I met the Foo Fighters. Which was oh, just, yeah? yeah? Congrats. Lo- lovely guys. Yeah. Um, and uh, more importantly, something arrived in the post that's for you. From, oh. from me. Oh, my word. Why? You've just, you've just moved, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a housewarming present. Oh, very nice. Is this going to be funny? Because you, the way you're saying it, you're really pleased with yourself. I am. Do you know what it is, uh, intern Charles? Yeah. Yeah. Should I be excited? Yeah. You're a Plymouth Argyle fan, aren't you? Yeah. Well, well if I'd said no, it would have got awkward. Yeah. You, uh, do you have an outdoor space at your new place? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm starting to worry. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Plymouth Argyle gnome. It's a touch of class, isn't it? <laughs> so if you're to describe... <laughs> how tall is that? That's about... So I'd say about... That, I mean, that is definitely going in the garden. Oh, Next to the water feature. OK, good. There was um, So it, about 30 centimetres tall. Yep. Um, but enough about intern Charles. <laughs> um, uh, um, we'll, we'll tweet a picture of it, I nice, suppose. Nice green. No, it's, it's, he's in a kind of bottle green. He's got a football under his arm. That's actually perilously balanced. I don't think he's holding it properly. He's got a beard. I, what, what, how did you source that? It's from the Plymouth Argyle official club shop. Is it? Yeah. I wonder how many of them they shift a year. It was that or a wallet, and I thought you'd appreciate it. Yeah, no, that's better. <laughs> I mean, what, what use should I have with a wallet? <laughs> this is a lot more useful. Well, that's made my day. We'll, have, we'll sit him there, and he can watch the show. <laughs> what we'll do, we'll leave him on there. And then when the guests come in, because we've got Lucy Beaumont and James Acast to come in, we won't mention he's there and see if they pick up on it. <laughs> OK. Josh Whittacombe. I'm Sky Paolo Natini, uh, producer Neil um, of the Josh Whittacombe <laughs> show, uh, has a little joke. I just said, I and Sky, that or weather. Yeah, oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Charles just got that. I I realised I didn't react then, but it's because you'd already said it to me off air. So it's really very little. It's pa- so let's let's do it again, but probably like 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 it's just just happening. It's Paolo Mantini, Iron the Sky on XM. That or weather. <laughs> I think you should say that after every song and see if it works as a joke any other time. Uh, right now, it's time for any other business, uh, in which we ask for uh, you to pick us up on mistakes we've made or maybe just bad jokes um each week uh we uh we respond to your emails we will uphold the complaint we want them as pedantic as possible we will uphold it with this sound or we will reject it with this sound yes there we go dear josh producer neil et al that's a bit of a kick in the teeth for charles i am a vehement podcast listener so you can picture the sheer horror strewn across my face blimey they're quite quite verbose 
I feel like they're writing lyrics for Paolo Nettini. I'm a vehement podcast listener, and you can p- picture the sheer horror strewn across my face when listening to episode se- 75. Neil was ridiculed for listening to tapes of X of M his sister recorded, making essentially a 90s podcast. The best of all the podcasts. In turn, meaning I was being mocked for listening the podcast, listening to the podcast. As an aside, Josh, you've questioned Neil's nationality on numerous occasions. Having been to Uddingston and Bothwell, I can vouch for Neil's Scottish heritage. I cannot stress enough just how much people would not like living the lie would not lie about living there. Yours pedantically, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> two two issues there. Uh, obviously, we're not going to hold the nationality thing. We dealt with that uh, with, uh, under under the uh, bra- umbrella of independence. Yes. Um, what was your views on uh, the uh, having out people for listening to the podcast? I don't have any view. Well, no, I think it's a positive. Yeah. So I'm holding because you were mocking. No, but it wasn't like a, an olden day podcast. Podcast isn't just recorded. Right? Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hi, Josh and Neil. Is it? Is this? We've taken out the music. Did your sister leave in the music? Did she do the opposite of what people do when they used to record the charts? <laughs> <laughs> so most people are annoyed that like Bruno Brooks would talk over the music because they then have a bit of Bruno Brooks when they're recording the songs. But you're annoyed because you just wanted to hear pure DJ. Yep. But you'd get a bit of the songs underneath. <laughs> um, hi, Josh and Neil. I would like to point out two errors from Josh within a month. This is a very... Just one at a time. People are really going for it. I'd like to point out two errors from Josh within a matter of seconds of each other. The first, wrongly correcting a guest that Van Morrison sound, sang Brown Eyed Boy. Yeah. And uh, talking about wicking Charlotte Johansson. I wouldn't... I, I can't... I mean, I haven't listened to the tapes, but I can't imagine I'd have called her Charlotte Johansson. I think you did. It rings a bell. Really? Yeah. My future wife... <laughs> Why would I have called her Charlotte Johansson? Why were we talking about Charlotte Johansson? It's life, mate. Things happen. We make mistakes. It's life. <laughs> I, I mean, obviously... Um, oh, yeah, fair enough. And Brown Eyed Boy. Yeah, I mean, we've all... We, we, I accept that. Yeah. I, I, mean, I feel a bit... I think, we, I can't, I think we're going to... That upholding is pending okay. until we uh, go listen back to the tapes. And that is never going to happen. So that's just going to be pending forever. <laughs> Uh, Neil, if you uphold this, could I have a double ding, please? Um, yours pedantically, Dave from Commentary. Dear Josh, in podcast episode 76, open brackets at a prox 19 minutes 55 seconds, when referencing his German teacher performing stand-up and the whole class failing their mock GCSE, producer Neil said, in relation to the suggestion that there had been cause and effect, I'm not going to libel him and say that. Libel is written form of defamation. Had Neil said such a thing, the correct term would have been slander. A simple, though technically inadequate way to remember this is spoken slander, literary libel. Yours pedantically, (laughs) Susan Perry, kiss. Is that how you're going to remember it from now on? I think I will, yeah. I feel I've learned everything today. It's a bit like never never eat shredded wheat, isn't it? Yeah. 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 (laughs) I wonder what you're talking about then, but yeah. Yeah, that's how... I use North South... North East, South West. Yeah. Naughty Elephant Squirt Water. Naughty Elephant Squirt Water. Do they? You've not heard that one? Is that And you use that to remember what you don't want to eat for breakfast. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Josh and producer Neil, in episode 75's cooking feature... God, that makes the show sound better than it is. <laughs> that makes it sound like a very different show. In fact, you get to the end of the sentence and it does descend. In episode 75's cooking feature, Neil stated that there were two ways to serve a Muller Corner. <laughs> You implied that the normal way is to eat the said dessert was to fold the pot and tip the vanilla balls into the yoghurt. Now, I consider myself a normal person. (laughs) But I actually eat my muller corner according to Neil's first serving suggestion. I dunk my spoon in one side, then the other, thus controlling the ratio of yoghurt to balls. I put it to you that this, in fact, is the normal way to eat the yoghurt and that you, Josh, are incorrect to condemn Neil's of my chosen method. Yours pedantically, Rachel. Um, so what she does is the yoghurt, she dips the spoon in the yoghurt and uses that as a kind of lubricant. It's like a, uh, a, like, yoghurt, a yoghurt dip dab. Like a yoghurt dip dab she's created. No one does that. There's two people that you've heard so from. you and Rachel, and Rachel's clearly got anger management issues. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we can uphold that because because Rachel's evidence is that she's an all person, but she's given no reason to. She's she's not said throughout my life people have described her as normal. <laughs> it's purely her own evidence. And at the end of the day, what is normal? 
Yeah, am I right, guys? Am I right? So, uh, would you like to reject that, Neil? Not this week. Dear parishioners, J Dog, P Nizzle, and intern Charles, are you P Nizzle, our producer? Yeah. Regarding your recent pants based shenanigans, Jay Z is not known to wear a new pair of socks every day. Nor can he be described as box fresh. Perhaps you're thinking of David Beckham, who is reported to have never worn the same pair of boxer shorts twice and was known to spend £2,000 a month, $2,000, prior to the launch of his underwear range. This is far from thrifty. What about Jeremy Clarkson, Jezza Clarkson, he's called him. I'm, good, I'm refusing that. What about Jeremy Clarkson's thrifty move of wearing the same pair of box shorts normally in reverse and then inside out? Thrifty business, amen, Rob Cowan. Uh, I mean, I, I enjoyed the trivia about David Beckham. But again, I don't know if that's real. He does a lot of charity work, Beckham, as well, and I think he would see that as being too frivolous. I think $2,000 a month is water off a duck's back for David Beckham, isn't it? It is, but it's more the gesture. No, fair enough. Well, with the Jeremy Clarkson thing... Oh, he's that kind of guy. <laughs> oh, he's that kind of guy. That's, uh, that's drawn a line under it. <laughs> if you have any other business, email us at josh at xfm.co.uk. We come up to set, set up the day's uh, Twitter topic. Fashion choices you have never lived down. Uh, Neil, I'm sure you've got quite a lot on this. Oh, I wasn't going to tell the story. Situ- right, let, let me start you off. So, uh, well, my one that sticks with me from childhood, and it's normally childhood, isn't it? When we come up with this, you said, did you ever wear spliffy jeans? I didn't just wear spliffy jeans, mate. I, I combined it with the jacket. <laughs> Uh, top to bottom, uh, dark black denim with uh, the the white cotton trim, mm-hmm. and then a um, picture of a guy on the back pocket and on maybe the, the front, you know, meeting up with uh, Captain Doobstick. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember um, what someone saying to me, you really like Spliffy, don't you? <laughs> and I just thought, this has got to stop. I've got a problem. I've got a problem, yeah. <laughs> I'm addicted to spliffy jeans. <laughs> it's a gateway. It's a gateway, Gene. I'll come on, Levi's before you know it. Neil? Well, you say most of these are uh, childhood problems yeah. that you yeah. have. And I, I'm going to include, yeah, fashion as in a statement, not of something I wore, of a haircut I thought I should get. When was this? How old were you? I would have been 18, 19. I took a year out. You took a year out, of course you did. I went travelling, grew my hair. Oh, you didn't get you didn't get dreadlocks. Came back, thought, what would a white guy in Birmingham get? He'd amazing, get dreadlocks. Amazing, really? Wow. They lasted twenty four hours before did I they? went, What is going on with my life? Wow. You got dreadlocks. So how did you get dreadlocks? Well, you basically just kind of back comb and twist So you don't the hair. go somewhere. Listeners in Birmingham will know the indoor market. Oasis market, sorry. And there's a, there used to be hairdressers in there that would well, no one coming out of that did place you, ever you, looked good. Did you go to an Afro-Caribbean hairdresser? I think she was that did it, yeah. No, I meant like you didn't go, like like Desmond's. Oh, no, 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 no. Right, okay. No, so no. I was going to say, if you'd walked in there, 19-year-old white middle-class guy and gone, hey, guys, <laughs> did you take a picture of Bob Marley? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, yeah, they lasted about 24 hours. Wow. And then that was it. Oh, well, well this is going to be, this is gonna be a, uh, a topic we want to talk about. The other uh, topic we want to talk about this week is uh, mm-hmm. things you've heard through walls. Um, this came from once again. Well, let's not recap here. The, the, we would, what have you heard through? Because um, also, and I, I do want to answer, the last place I lived in, I, I, the bedroom was in the basement. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I could hear the tube through the floor. <laughs> is that feasible? Yeah. Is I that think, right? Yeah, I, th- I would say that's feasible. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I've got that off my chest. Have you? What have you heard through walls, Neil? Uh, well, that was the reason. The reason we chose this because I learnt my neighbour's name. Oh yeah, through through someone shouting it at him on the other end of a phone through yeah. a hall. I am. Um, I'm not going to go into the details, but my friend at uni lived next to um, a. Uh, we, well, we'll call it what it was: a 24-hour massage parlour. <laughs> <laughs> so there was lots of. Uh, Relaxation. Yeah, there was a lot of relaxation going on. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Intern Charles's face at this point is a picture. It's a similar one to when Neil thought we were going to start talking about Scottish uh, independence. <laughs> so anything you've heard through a wall or reasons you think your neighbours are odd, it, it's a peeping, peeping Tom special. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. We 
We'll talk about two things. One, reasons you think your neighbour's rod. Two things you've heard through walls. Uh, Neil uh, said he thinks he'd get on with uh, Lucy Parker's neighbour. Or just... Uh, we woke up to see our neighbour hang out of his window with a boom mic apparently recording the rain. What a legend. <laughs> would you like a copy of that? Yeah, if possible. Well, I mean, would you, have you... You don't do that stuff like that. Do you own a boom mic? I don't, sadly. We can all have that dream. <laughs> oh, there's just birthdays coming out. How, I bet they're expensive, aren't they, boom mics? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, look, uh, Lucy Parker, I mean, I, I think that's all right. Unless he wasn't recording the rain. But then if he was, like, trying to, like, record something covertly, wouldn't we hang out his window with a boom mic? Josh Widdicombe, We're now joined by Lucy Beaumont. Hello. Hello. Show debutante. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new one. It's a new one. Is it exciting? Um. Well, you've got to say yes, that's the problem. I put you in a situation there where... <laughs> it somewhere. is, yeah. Yeah. What, d- debutante, did you say? Yeah, do you not... Is that, that's a word, is it? Yeah, that is a word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it means making your debut. Oh, really? It sounds a bit robotic, doesn't it? What? Yeah, I'm not... Did it's not a transformer. <laughs> um, is it, it is a word, isn't it? I'm starting to question myself now. <laughs> it is a word. I'm yeah. Sorry, it, it will be me. I would have heard of it. Yeah, well, <laughs> use it now. Go about, go about your everyday life. Don't... De- isn't debutante as well a word... Don't you use it for, like, when you're going to the prom? I think it's an American thing, yeah. You, what does it mean? It means your first ever prom, I think. So this is like your first ever prom. Uh, I didn't think it would be such a sticking point. <laughs> It'd be good on a t-shirt. So. Debut one, yeah. Well, like a trendy East London t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's market it. You I think that's... You got me one, really. I should have got you one. Yeah. Well, you know, we've got an hour, 50 minutes. If we send Charles out now, <laughs> do you think you could come back with a debut on t-shirt? I, d- I have no idea. Uh, sure. no. no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Neil's shaking his head because he's worried someone else will have to make the tea. Um, how are you, Lucy? I'm good. I'm very well, thank you. Good. Uh, you, you just... Well, I say just come back from Edinburgh. It feels like for the whole of September you've just come back from Edinburgh. It takes a while to get out of your system. It, it does, yeah. I've the same. I'm not in a routine yet. No, what 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 do you normally be doing with your son? Well, I don't know what time to go to bed. Because you go to bed at like really weird yeah. times, don't you, in Edinburgh? You're about three. I I went because the bars are open forever. Yeah. So five o'clock in the morning they shut, don't they? Yeah, I think that's a good. I'm quite pleased that the bars close earlier in London now. Like I'm against that late night opening because you just don't know. It's a good way of stopping. Mm. <laughs> what time do you go to bed now then? It depends. I mean. I, I was, I've just finished The Killing. Right. Um, so that That's was, a TV show. It was a late one, you know. And and then uh, I start, I restarted um, Breaking Bad. You restarted Breaking yeah, Bad? Yeah, I had to stop for a bit because I was going to bed too late. <laughs> and now I've started... I had a break and went to bed early. Yeah. And now I've started on Spiral. What Spiral? Well, it's not very good, so I'm going to bed early. <laughs> what is it? It's... You know, like, you get the killing, they're like the detective. Yeah. And the bridge, I was... What's the bridge? I don't know the bridge. The bridge is, is like the killing. Right. It's like, you know, detective. Yeah. Sort of, yeah, murder plot. And the spiral is, is French. <laughs> <laughs> so, you do, is it... It's the killing's Danish, isn't it? Yeah, the spiral, I think, came first. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to give you a lecture about that. <laughs> the spiral came first. It was the first one of those yeah. sort of things. And it, so it's shot really weird. It's sh- it shot a bit like a children's TV program. <laughs> <laughs> what, like colourful? Yeah, like when they're like... They're like panning real quick onto things and then like whiz out. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my favourite was... um. Uh, this life when they I don't know I'm not going to get into a thing about directing I I suddenly realised I was about to talk about my favourite camera angles and we are discussing today reasons you think your neighbours are odd we have Lucy Beaumont here hello 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 Um, now I've we we realised that I don't have any reason I never thought my neighbours are odd (laughs) and you fear that that may be that I'm the weird one yeah okay have you you've had odd neighbours Lucy Every neighbour's... Every neighbour. Is that... How do you... What, what have they done? They're not bad now. But in Hull, in rent accommodation, I used to move every year to just a different street. And yeah. they would, on either side, one of them... What kind of things yeah. happen? Well, mostly because the walls have, have been so thin in the houses I've... I've yeah, I... Yeah. So you can hear... I had a guy... His bed was ne- next to my bed, you know, but in yeah. the wall in between... 
and my alarm once didn't go off and all he had to do was go Lucy <laughs> <laughs> and he brought me up through the, through the wall and he used to come in drunk from the pub and play you know honky tonk piano <laughs> he used to play it and, and say what song do you want tell me which one you want and I'll play it to you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my word. Did you know... Did you ever speak to him well, without I, the wall being there? Yeah, it was... Yeah, I, I used to go around the back to try and not... And it's a bit knew, like blind date. It, <laughs> he knew when I was avoiding him, so he would, like, find me. It, it, oh, God. I felt we were living together. Yeah. What what songs did you request? <laughs> <laughs> I request shut the, you know, something up. <laughs> I've just remembered that my friend, she... Uh, I'm going to have to phrase this for a Sunday morning. She was had a paper-thin wall between her and her friend at uni. And her friend was, you know... What? You know, with a boy. Smiling. Smi with a boy. Table tennis. Table, she was playing <laughs> table tennis with a boy. Mm. So my friend put on music to drown it out... And then uh, her flatmate knocks on the door and says, can you turn the music oh. down, please? Which, it's an awkward situation. Um, we've got, uh, we've also, um, have, you, have you had any other bad neighbours? I mean, that is, that's going to take some beating, isn't it, that? I've had loads. Go on. Uh, any more? Well, I was in a flat and I had a guy above me who was from um, China and he couldn't, he was insomniac, he couldn't get used to the time difference. So he just used to walk around the room, just just constant footsteps all, just all night. Are you sure it was that he, he couldn't get used to the time difference? Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he said? Wow. That's amazing. That I, this is what holes like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rumours are true. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. Call my Josh. <laughs> and um, we've previously... Uh, Bluffed our way through. Oh, it's not bluff. That, that's the single worst word I could choose when ripping off a format. Um, previously done 80s movies and game shows. Yep. So, Lucy, I'm going to give you five uh, children's TV shows. Okay. Um, and what what's the score you need to get? It doesn't really matter. Three. Three out of five. You have to guess whether they're true When are they from? False. Are they all in the same? They're mainly 90s. Right. They're 90s. They they're, are. Well, some of them are are from never because they're fictional right okay but pretend they're 90s <laughs> okay. do you want one two three four or five to start you off five five cadillacs and dinosaurs okay are you, are you, let, let's come back to that one because <laughs> i um i realized i hadn't finished the sentence when i wrote it down <laughs> which is um well I, I here it is okay you're ready cadillacs and dinosaurs so i, I have to say if this is real or not yeah well that's not real is it what cadillacs and dinosaurs you haven't heard the description yet that's a programme called Cadillacs and... Yeah. Are you, are you just going to make your decision there and then? I don't think there's been anything that's had a Cadillac and a dinosaur in it. Well, wait and hear, because okay. it might not be about Cadillacs and dinosaurs. OK, sorry. <laughs> but, I, I, I do agree, Jack Tenrec and his crew of ecological freedom fighters known as the Mechanics. His often reluctant companion is Foreign Ambassador Hannah Dundee. Together they confront a series of issues facing the futuristic environment that humanity has come to inhabit. <laughs> Has that made it any easier to decide whether that's true or false? I'm stunned. <laughs> um, oh, there was. Do you know what I, I like? Is Lucy's the first person that's actually wanted to play the game properly? Uh, you've actually putting thought into it. Yeah. What are you going to go with? D there was one where she went on a family with her family on um, a safari. That's not this, is it? That's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you just that that's, that's not that doesn't exist. Incorrect. You're Real. There we go. Move on. One, two, three, or four. That was a <laughs> <TV. laughs> program. Yeah. What was it called? Cadillacs and dinosaurs. <laughs> I thought it was more cryptic than that. No. I'm sorry. Is there, I'm putting too much thought into it. <laughs> it's fine. Pick yourself up. Oh, dust yourself I off. I haven't done a quiz for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very stressful environment. Okay. One, two, three or four? One. Dungy jump. Oh, my word. Sonia challenges three pairs of children to amass points by bouncing into a huge vat of gunge and collecting giant foam fruit. She's assisted by Peter Simon. <laughs> not true. C correct! Yay! Why do you think that was not true? 
Um, <laughs> I didn't think there was... I, I can't remember anyone called Sonia doing that with children. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two, three or four? Two. Eureka TV. Fern Cotton looks at the latest technology, high-tech Eureka, Eureka, magnifies an ed- everyday object, micro Eureka, and conducts science experiments with everyday objects, little Eureka. Oh. Sounds like something you'd like to watch. Yeah. Not true. It was true. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It, TV series. You what? That was one of her first TV series. Was that a big break? Yeah. And look what she's built from that. What an empire. So you've got to get the last two right. Okay, three or four. Three. Kevin and Cucumber. By day, Kevin is a normal school child, but by night he works for Interpol solving international crimes with Cucumber, his toy dog. Will he manage to stop the smugglers and be back for assembly? Not true. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, you're right. I was quite pleased with that. I thought I... I was thinking of pitching Kevin and Cucumber. <laughs> <Should you> know? <laughs> I was, no. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I'm with you. I wouldn't call him Cucumber, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that was the issue? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so this is the decider. Oh, this is exciting. So, is this true or false? This is the decider. Right. Heart attack. A one-off special of Art Attack for the British Heart Foundation Week in which Neil Buchanan uses the medium of art to warn children about the importance of looking after their heart. It ended with a huge heart collaged from deck chairs. <laughs> Not true. Are you sure? Oh. Well, no, you, you're right. Oh, right. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I put that extra Chris Tarrant. Oh, you, that was fun. <laughs> that was You won. Round. I, I did it well. Yeah. You what? won. I won it. You won it. Wow. <laughs> That's your last quiz for a while. Josh now, we're talking about reasons you think your neighbours are odd. I don't know... I don't know where I stand on this, so I'm going to throw it out to you two. Craig, um, I'll give him his full... Uh, I'll give him his full title. Uh, I think he got onto Twitter late, let's put it this way. At Craig26120766. <laughs> uh, I w- this is Craig. I witnessed my neighbour washing their washing line. <laughs> is that an issue? I mean, just give it a nice wipe down. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it, maybe it depends. Maybe a bird had done its business, so you don't want that on your washing. Well, you actually, Craig has added it. it was brand new, which was the weirdest bit. But then maybe if you've got a new washing line, you're worried it's... Oh. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Do you want another one? Yes, please. Oh, this is amazing. Right. Things you've heard from your neighbours... We had really annoying neighbours who kept the rave scene going alive and well every Friday and Saturday night between 2 and 4am. These people were in their 40s. However, one night, a comment heard through our paper-thin walls made me realise their party only went so far. Uh, The woman said, Dave, a woman's got needs. His response, Babe, I'm in a rut. The person, I just kept dropping keywords into conversations with them from then on, which I wouldn't have done. Oh, <laughs> oh a woman's got needs. I didn't think anyone actually said a woman's got needs in, like, in real life. <laughs> have you ever had that conversation, Neil? Uh, I'm not going to bring that side of my private life to air. <laughs> they might have been reading a script or the internet. <laughs> <laughs> They're rehearsing a soap opera. <laughs> Like kitchen kitchen sink drama. I um I I don't know what I'd do if that was the situation. But they must know. I I think I might have chipped in. <laughs> Go on, Dave. A woman has got needs, mate. Um ob- obviously we, we we don't know what the woman's needs were. <laughs> we're we're presuming oh, it's it, dirty. It's sad, isn't it? What a shame. Yeah, I feel mate. sorry for both of the I keep picturing that man washing his washing the hand. <laughs> Loser, Josh Riddickham Show on XFM. We're into the final hour. Producer Neil is still here. Hiya. Lucy Beaumont. Hello. And James A. Castor has arrived. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> you right? Um, how dare you even ask me in such a jovial manner if I'm all right? You know exactly how I'm doing. What's up? What's up? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I wonder what could be up, Josh. I don't know, maybe I've got cabbaged again <laughs> by the very man who's meant to be protecting me against the cabbaging. <laughs> well, was, I think we need to go back to the start on this one. Um, you'd been cabbaged. Um, if you, if uh, people are listening for the first time, James um, has a, a feud with his um, 
friend's son who keeps sending him cabbages in the post <laughs> and leaving cabbages in his bed. Yes. And send writing notes saying you've been cabbaged. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nine-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Trent, if you're listening, keep up the good work. Um, no, no, well, don't. It will keep up the good work with consent in adults. So what? What happened? What would take, take us through what happened? What? I tell you what happened. I was in Edinburgh during the last week, and I got a letter in the post, which is very rare for a house you're only living in for a month. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I opened it, thinking it would be something nice for my parents, maybe who had been to visit and knew the address, and maybe they sent me a nice little "Well done for completing the fringe, James," or something like that. And I open it up. And it's, a, I tell you what as well, it is the wettest cabbage leaf I've received so far. <laughs> All the other cabbage leaves have been at least a little bit dry. It felt horrible and clammy. <laughs> and there was a note in it, written by Mick, that said, cabbaged again, ha ha ha. But I looked at the front of the envelope and that was not Mick's handwriting or Trent's handwriting. And I knew I recognised the handwriting from somewhere. I was trying to figure it out. And then Trent came in and went, did you get the cabbage leaves that Josh sent you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> worthy person, my confidant! <laughs> Let me defend myself. What would you do in this situation? I was at your house in Edinburgh. Right, I would not cabbage someone. There you go, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> right, and Mick, Trent's, uh, Mick Trent, the nine-year-old son of David Trent, comes in. Yeah. And, um, he wasn't there for the whole month, let's outline that. <laughs> Yeah, he happened to be visiting on the same day as you. He happened to be visiting on the same day as me. He comes in, David goes, Mick, why don't you write a cabbage note for James? <laughs> and Josh can leave it, can give it to him tonight when he sees him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to deliver the cabbage note. I got mm. back to London, found it, thought, I can't let down a nine-year-old boy. <laughs> So I'll have to send James some cabbage in the post. <laughs> oh, suddenly you've got more loyalty to this nine-year-old boy you've met for the first time in your life. What would you... What, what would about you... the 29-year-old boy who's been nothing but true to you? How did you feel when you opened it? Felt devastated once again. <laughs> I thought, I can't trust anyone. He's the person I've turned to this whole time. Been telling, talking about the cabbage in, he's been counselling me, he's meant to be getting me through the whole thing. It's like if you went to your psychiatrist and they went, yeah, I've been sleeping with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty quick. Your shirt is cabbage coloured. Yeah, well, today. Yeah, it's, it's affected me quite a lot. Psychologically, psychologically, it's awful. I know. I know it's no coincidence that Josh played loser by Beck before I came on today. Well, <laughs> um, I, uh, there's no cabbage based songs that I can think of. Um, but um, so what, what's your plan, cabbaging wise? I've got a plan, but I'm not going to tell you, am I? You're the last person I'm going to tell anything to now. I wouldn't let this continue, though. Don't think you have to cabbage because you've been cabbaged. No, uh, Lucy, it's very clear <laughs> at this point this that cycle. that is the only way I'm going to end it. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you break the cycle of cabbaging? Yeah, Rise you, above must, it? you must do immediately. I've got to cabbage. <laughs> Or I'm not, not cabbage. Lucy, you're very confusing sensei at this point. <laughs> Immediately stop the urge to feather cabbage. But I haven't done a single one yet. Z exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you're thinking about it, aren't you? Yeah, it's all I ever think about. <laughs> I'm thinking about how I'm going to cabbage this nine-year-old back. And now I've got to somehow incorporate a revenge on Josh. It's not his fault. Don't blame the child. Blame that child. He invented the whole thing. Blame the parents. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, David Trent is the perfect person to blame. Maybe you should cabbage David Trent to draw a line under it all. No. Are you crazy? <laughs> you just bring on a whole whirlwind of fruit and veg. You could do what the Mafia did and then, like, cabbage David Trent's dad or mother. Like, <laughs> Monty yeah. Trent. A bit more Monty Trent. He, no, I can't. He's, That'll stop it. He's a, he's a judge. <laughs> but that's true. <laughs> I can't do that. You can't cabbage a judge. No. Josh Widdicombe. Yes. We are still joined by producer Neil. Afternoon. Lucy Beaumont. Hello. James A. James Caster. Caster. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Josh Widdicombe's show. James, we are talking today about um, reasons you think your neighbours are weird or things you've heard through walls. Mm. Any thoughts? Woke up this morning by house music through the wall, but it's lucky because I was going to sleep in otherwise and not make it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Were they listening to XFM? Yeah, they were. Is, is it just your voice laughing about cabbaging a close friend? <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't really speak to my neighbours ever. I used to. But that's that's my view. It's awful, isn't it? No, I think it's good. They could, they could be in this room right now. I wouldn't know it was them. <laughs> I, could, I could walk in and be like, "Excuse me, is this?" And I wouldn't go, "Oh, right, mate, how's it going? Let's get a lift home together." I'd just be like, "Who's that stranger?" Yeah, you know I mean? I, that's the right attitude, isn't it? Do you speak to your neighbours, Neil? 
Not really. My wife does though. I, I came home to find we were looking after a neighbour's dog the other weekend. Really? Because <laughs> her, her neighbour had had to go away. So Alex, my wife, just went, oh, we'll look after your dog. That's nice. It's like, who is this neighbour and what is that dog doing in our house? <laughs> Pretty good, that but it wasn't discussed. Well, can you do a swap so they look, look after your baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good point. Yeah. No. Can I just good? say, uh, Andrew Mackinson's just uh, tweeted in, you should definitely cabbage the judge. Hashtag... <laughs> Cabbaging the establishment. <laughs> I'm now getting worried that I shouldn't have mentioned that Trent Stapp was the judge. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's a good... It's too late. <laughs> it's too late, isn't it? Do, do, do you want some uh, some more uh, th- things, uh, reasons people think their neighbours are weird? Yeah. OK. Last Christmas, uh, she, this is from Kaylee Ann. Last Christmas, she asked if we would buy her nude calendar. Nude. Nude, not new. Yeah, uh, we declined. I'd have accepted. I'd have definitely bought it, wouldn't you? No. No. If they're having to come round to the neighbours to sell the new <laughs> calendar, it's probably not going to be very... No, it's not going to be the sexist. The thing is, I'm quite keen on homemade gifts. <laughs> and uh, I would be tempted to make my own. <laughs> <laughs> my neighbours um, put the washing on the line every day, whatever the weather, including rain and snow. That look, that sounds like it's a, um, a signal. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let the dealers know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> this... <laughs> Um, Claire Pattinson, she, this is like one of, she, uh, is the, the, LA, she nominated her parrot Arthur for the ALS challenge. <laughs> that? That's the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> do you think you had to do it with full bucket or like with a, with a parrot sized bucket? There's people come around and the sort of parrot cage is full of ice <laughs> and nothing, just feathers. <laughs> How, how, how'd it go? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, did, didn't even nominate anyone. <laughs> so I awesome. suppose he could talk. <laughs> yeah, we could. Yeah, that, that's he nominated it. Polly. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only animal you can nominate, really, because they, they, they can nominate someone afterwards. <laughs> that's one of those chimps who can do sign language. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. James A. Castor and Lucy Beaumont, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Producer Neil, though, now it's, it's your chance to um, take the reins. Um, unlikely celebrity friendships. This was sent in by Ryan S., who's a listener. OK. Anthony Costa from Blue. Brilliant. Got off to a good start. <laughs> His great mates with Paul Chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> from Chuckle Brothers. From Chuckle Brothers. Wow. So how, how's this... Well, I think Ryan, uh, who tweeted me this, must follow one or the other on Twitter because Paul nominated Ant- Anthony for the Ice Bucket Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> and did I, and <laughs> just, just Anthony? Just, yeah, just Anthony, not the other boys from Blue. No. Just Anthony. And was Barry involved? Uh, did Barry pour the bucket on Paul? I don't know. I've not had a chance to watch uh, his, his ice bucket scene. <laughs> Ryan didn't look to me to use that up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, he didn't even mean to be, he yeah. didn't even mean to do the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> he just wanted to chill his champagne. <laughs> They're the ones who accidentally started it. <laughs> <laughs> just nominate someone, make it look deliberate. It's, 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 it's a thing now. <laughs> That's more or less it on the Josh Wickham Show. Before we go... Um, a chance as a thank you to the guests you can uh, you can plug uh, what and also uh, the, the situation is we are uh, now on a Sunday we're, we're worried we're competing with Sunday brunch so during it uh, Neil's going to prepare some food <laughs> <laughs> what have you got for us this week now I have uh, something that's portable and yet filling and nutritious okay. I can't say that word uh, it's Derrily Dunkers oh, right. and w- when would you eat this as I say, anyway, you, you could eat it on the bus, on the train, um, okay. in bed. And how are you going to start? By taking the foot. Well, I'm going to take the foot, take it out of the fridge. Normally, mm-hmm. I've got one I prepared earlier, so it's out. I don't think the anyone's ever kept Dairy Lee Dunkers in the fridge. You, uh, that's the thing you buy and eat. No one stores them, do they? Height of luxury. Some people will do it. Do but, they? But Angelina Jolie doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you would take it out of the fridge and then you would just simply peel. Okay, what have you gone for? Tubes. Um, Jumbo tubes. Jumbo tubes. Okay, uh, James, uh, plugging? Um, while, uh, while Neil cooks the food? I will be going on a tour starting on the 21st of September of my show, Recognise. Uh, this month I'll be in Salford and I will be in Liverpool and Reading. And later in the tour I'll be at the Soho Theatre for a week starting on the 27th of October. 
Very nice. Lucy? I'm doing Soho Theatre, first till the 4th of October. I'd really like people to come to it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's nice. You want the people to... James just doesn't, doesn't care. I do want people... Oh, more than anything, I want people to come to it. Oh, it's it's it would be so bad it. if they weren't there. Uh, Neil, how's, how's the food going? Good. I've, uh, I've, I'm fully prepped. So, <laughs> uh, so, so shall I try? Yeah, if you want. Do, do either of the guests want to try? Yeah. Yeah, James, do you, do you want to have a... Yes, you any have a there's enough I'll, tubes to go around. I'll have a whole tube, if you don't mind. Do you want a dunk there? Uh, oh, a good <laughs> amount of elas oh. elasticity. It's a good technique. From the... That's lovely. Lucy, would you like to try? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got half a tube. Oh, this has been my most popular dish so far. Yeah, no one's actually tried Neil's food yet. <laughs> How do you feel this feature's going? Really well. Um, if only the... Listeners could taste what I'm tasting <laughs> right now. Yeah. It's a bit sweet, actually, isn't it? Yeah, really, oh. um... What? I've just realised I made a sausage sandwich this morning. It's in my bag downstairs. We could oh, downstairs. we could have had that instead. Ooh. Well, that, that really does bring a shine off the Dairy Lee Dunkers. <laughs> um, but thank you very much for coming in, guys. Uh, first to the 4th of October, Lucy at the South Theatre. James Salford from... 21st of September. 21st of September. www.jamesacaster.com for full tour dates. <laughs> there we go. And thank you very much. And we will see you next week with Tiffany Stevenson, James Acaster, producer Neil, and more Dearly Dunkers. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>